So the County of Sonoma sent us some notes in regards to what is happening with COVID as of now. And it says, we are experiencing an unprecedented spike in COVID cases here in Sonoma County. At Christmas, we were averaging a little over 120 new cases daily, but today we're averaging over 700 cases. That's a 500% increase in just 18 days. Meanwhile, our COVID hospitalizations have increased from 25 a day to more than 80 today. At its highest point during the pandemic, the average number of COVID patients each day at the six Sonoma County hospitals as high as 104, but the state is projecting in its model that we could average more than 380 hospitalizations by the time past this peak. For that reason, county health officials took action this week to ask residents to stay home as much as possible for the next 30 days, starting yesterday, and to limit their interactions with those who are not part of it, of this, um, or part of the immediate family, that is. We recommend, it says the county, that audiences limit their travels to work or school only, and only leave home to go shopping for groceries or see a doctor. This can help to avoid getting COVID at this time. A health order canceling large gatherings of more than 50 people indoors or more than 100 people outdoors was also issued to prevent future spread of the virus in our county. This order will remain in effect for the next 30 days until February 11th. These steps are necessary to reduce the chances of many people getting exposed to COVID-19 in a single event. We know this is what happens with the Omicron. We know that meetings, particularly large gatherings of more than 12 people, currently account for 44% of cases with a known source of infection. As of yesterday, our case rate has grown to 172 per day per 100,000 residents. By comparison, during the peak of the Delta, our case rate was 30 for, per day per 100 thousand residents. Our hospitalization rate has doubled in the last week, but it's still lower than previous peaks. There are currently 80 people hospitalized with COVID compared to 84 at the top of Delta. And that was in January of last year at 104. Our vaccination rate is an important reason why the consequences are not as bad as in other stages of the pandemic. Unvaccinated people in Sonoma County are 2.4 times more likely to become infected with COVID and 17.9 times more likely to be hospitalized. At the same time, they are 13.7 times more likely to die from COVID than the vaccinated population. We're also concerned that this spike in this is disproportionately affecting our seniors and poor communities and communities of color due to multiple risk factors, including multi-generational families living together and the use of shared transportation. These factors put these residents at higher risk of becoming infected with COVID-19. Mouth covers are required in all indoor public spaces, regardless of vaccination status. The state extended that requirement for another 30 days until February 15. Using an approved mask, such as the well-fitting surgical grade or N95 or KN95, is still one of the easiest ways to prevent the spread of the virus. Getting fully vaccinated and wearing a booster remains our best uh, tool for controlling the pandemic. We want to thank everyone. This is the county that says that they wanna thank everyone who has been vaccinated, including those who have already put their, or taken their booster shot. Now Sonoma County has the ninth, the ninth highest vaccination rate among California's 58 counties. We have administered more than 938,000 vaccinations and about 78% of the eligible population five years old and older are fully vaccinated with 7.9% partially vaccinated. Our school pediatric vaccination clinics are back after the break. The school clinics will be held again on a regular basis Today we're doing this, uh, you know, this show on Thursday, and there's going to be vaccination in Cesar Chavez Language Academy until 7 p.m. A list of upcoming clinics are available at the Sonoma County Office of Education website, which is 
SCOE.org, that is S-C-O-E.org. Our five to 11 year old population is now 24% fully vaccinated with another 15% partially vaccinated. So we are making good progress towards our goal of having 50% of those youth vaccinated by the end of January. Regarding booster vaccines, we have administered more than 176,000 doses to eligible residents 12 years old and older, providing important protection against the highly contagious Omicron variant. The CDC's and FDA last week approved a, a Pfizer's booster vaccine for children 12 and older. If uh, between for those who are 12 to 15, if they got their last vaccination five months ago. In addition to vaccinations, testing continues to be an important piece of our COVID response strategy, especially with children and teachers back in the classroom after the break. Testing is the best way to find out our COVID status, even if, if you don't have symptoms, but you think you've been exposed to someone who has tested positive, yes, get tested before going back to school, work, or anywhere. That said, we know that testing is hard to come by right now. There are sh shortages. We are doing our best with our testing partners and increase the capacity to provide you with more appointments. You can find information about testing opportunities, vaccination clinics, and how to make appointments by visiting SOCO Emergencia or SOCO Emergency. If you do not have access to a computer, you can call or text 211 or call the Spanish hotline at 707 565-4701. With so many people testing positive these days, there is some confusion about what to do if you get COVID. If you test positive, the first thing to do is isolate yourself for at least five days, get tested on the fifth day, and if it is negative, you can end your isolation. Again, this is for people who already are vaccinated. If you cannot get tested, you can end your isolation after 10 days, if you don't have any symptoms. If you use a home test, you must report those results to the County Health Department at 707-565-4701. 707-565-4701. And it is important to let individuals close to you know that, again, you tested positive at some point for uh, COVID. It is also important to, again, know somebody who, again, is uh, around you and who can uh, be of support uh, to you. Now, if you are close uh, or in close contact with someone who is, again, um, positive with COVID, again, it is important to let them know and to let other individuals you have been in contact with to get tested as soon as possible. People who are fully vaccinated do not have to quarantine after coming into contact with someone who has COVID unless they have symptoms. However, fully vaccinated people should be tested five to seven days after exposure, even if they have no symptoms and wear a mask indoors in public places for 14 days after exposure or until their exposure test result is negative. Unvaccinated people should stay home for 14 days after their last contact with the person who has COVID if they do not have symptoms, they should be isolated immediately and contacted by their and contact their healthcare provider. So it's important that we keep this in mind. It's important that we understand that we must take care of ourselves in order to be able to take care of each other. We can do this if we work together towards health. And my last comment, this is not the county's comment, but my last comment here is that we need to get past this idea. And unfortunately, and I've said it in a previous uh, video that I posted on YouTube, but we need to get over this idea. And again, the president has done a horrible job at this. County officials, the, the state of California officials have done a horrible job at this. And that is that Omicron and COVID is not something magical that, are, that is here today and is gonna be gone tomorrow and we'll never have to worry about it. COVID is here to stay, right? And eventually it will become just like the flu. You get a booster shot every year for the flu, that way you don't get sick. With COVID, this is our future, right? They have identified a new variant in 
France, right? They haven't even given it a name, but it has more mutations than Omicron, which had more mutations than Delta, which obviously had more mutations um, than the original. And so it's important. We need to get to that point. COVID is here to stay. That doesn't mean we lose hope. That doesn't mean we give up. That doesn't mean, what it means is that it's just part of life, just like the flu shot. If you get vaccinated and everybody got vaccinated, then we are not gonna get as sick anymore. But if some get vaccinated and some don't, there will continue to be mutations always that are getting much more dangerous to some individuals. Again, that is my comment here. And with that, we wanna thank you for listening to the information. We're gonna take a minute, we're gonna play a beautiful song and we'll be back with you here on KBBI. <laughs> 